Hello everyone and welcome back to this channel. On today's video, we're going to go to Final Cut Pro and we're going to explore and discuss about the editing tools that you need to know in order to make your editing process fast, fun and easy. So without any further ado, let's jump into Final Cut Pro. So here we are in Final Cut Pro and this is a little project that I have created over here in order to be able to talk about the editing tools. The first thing that we need to say is that in order to find your editing tools in Final Cut, you need to click on this icon icon right here and here you are all the editing tools that you need are over here you have seven tools and we're going to talk about all of them so grab a cup of coffee and let's do this first of all we have our select or selection tool and I would say that this is our neutral tool in a way so what does this mean so let's see what we can do with this first of all when you have the selection tool selected you can go on your timeline click for example on this clip right here you select it and by hitting backspace you just remove it from your timeline you make it disappear and command Z to undo this is one thing that you can do with your select tool. Another thing that you can do is that you can move and reorder your clips. So for example, I want to take this clip and instead put it here. I might want to take this one and put it here instead. So you can basically rearrange all your clips by using the select tool. Just click on the clip and drag it wherever you want this clip to go to. Another thing that we can do with the selection tool is that we can do a ripple edit. And what is ripple edit? Ripple edit is that you can actually extend or shorten the head or the tails of your clip. You can actually make it bigger or shorter and with the selection tool when you do that you actually affect the whole duration of your project so let's see what we're talking about let's say that we are in this clip right here we click on it select it and we go at the very end of it we go to the tail of the clip as we say and we just drag it like that and as you can see we also change the total duration of our project by doing that Another little secret of the select tool or selection tool is that you can double click at the bottom of a clip. So let's say right here and you basically separate the image from the audio of the clip. And this is really important because you can actually edit them separately at this stage. So let's say that in this case, you might want to cut the sound of this clip earlier. And I don't know, let's say that I want to drag the sound of this clip like that and you can actually create these type of edits and this is actually really helpful when you have a cut that is not actually really smooth if you edit this way you might make the transition from the one clip to the other a little bit smoother it really helps if you try it out and by the way if you double click on the clip again you just connect these two elements again. Last but not least for the selection tool, if you want to duplicate a clip, you can click on it and hit the option key on your laptop and drag it up. And this way you duplicate your clip. The next tool that we're going to talk about is the trim tool. And the trim tool is this one over here. As you can see, if you hit T on your keyboard, you're gonna select the trim tool. And by the way, I highly recommend that you learn the shortcuts for these tools by heart because this is going to make your editing process so much easier and smoother. So T on our keyboard, we have our trimming tool and what we can do now with the trimming tool. The trimming tool is actually great for working in between clips and what is different between the trimming tool and the selection tool that we mentioned before is that the trimming tool can actually adjust where your transition happens from one clip to the other without affecting the duration of your overall project. So let's see how that works. So let's say that we want to change this transition over here. We want to adjust it a little bit. So as you can see, we change it, but the overall duration is not being affected. And what we see on the viewer is the last frame of the one clip and the first frame of the second clip. So this way you can very easily choose where you want the transition from the one clip to the other to happen. And that's it. We fixed it. We fixed our transition. We put it on the exact spot where we want to, but we didn't actually affect the rest of the project. We didn't affect the duration of it at all. So basically you just click in between clips and you just drag 
and you find where you want your transition to happen. The next tool that we are going to talk about is the position tool or P on your keyboard. So the position tool is great for those of you who come from a different NLE or to those of you who are not used to the magnetic timeline. Because to be honest with you, the magnetic timeline is something that is in Final Cut Pro, but it's not like a common behavior to all other editing softwares. When I started using Final Cut Pro, I was really terrified of the magnetic timeline. I was like, what? Nowadays, I don't even think about it. I'm so used to it that I don't have to think about what should I put as a main timeline or what I should put as a connected clip. It just comes so naturally. But for those of you who are not used to that, the position tool is going to help you out. So P for position, as we said, and what you can actually do is that you can move clips around without having the magnetic timeline connecting everything no matter what. Let's say I want to move this one here and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So you can edit without having this thing in mind so much. The next tool is the range selection tool that you can also access by hitting R on your keyboard. So what you can do with the range selection tool is that you can edit and work with specific sections of a clip. Let's zoom into our clip and let's bring the audio up because I have muted the sound. Let's say that the sound is this. And let's say that I want from here to here, I want to lower the volume of the audio for this specific bit. And this is how you do it. And you can actually edit and work with specific parts of your clip, which can be really, really useful. Another thing that you can do with the range selection tool is that you can, for example, choose a specific part of your project to be exported. I don't know, let's say, for example, that you have a big project that is like, I don't know, six minutes and you want a teaser, a one minute teaser to use it for your social media, for your Instagram or for your Facebook. Well, how are you going to do that? How are you going to export one minute from this six minute video that you have there? Well, with the range selection tool, you can say that, for example, I want this part to be exported. Or you can make it even more specific and say that I want this specific part to be exported. And then you can go Command E and you can export this very specific bit from your project, which is really, really handy. I actually use that very, very often. And this is exactly for the reason I said, I want to make teasers for my uh, videos. And this is the way I do it. This is the way I can create these little teasers. The next tool that we're going to talk about is the blade tool. It's this one over here or B on your keyboard. And this little digital blade is the analogy to the actual razor blade that editors used to have when they were working with actual film strips. So what you can do with a blade is to cut your clips. Let's say, for example, that I want to cut this bit over here and then I want to cut over here and then I can go to selection tool by hitting A, select backspace and remove it. And this is what you can do with your blade. You can go here, for example, and then here, selection tool, select backspace and cut. And this is how the blade works. For me, the blade tool is like number one, the one that I use by far the most. And then last but not least, we have the zoom and the hand tool. These two tools, I actually don't use them that much. The zoom though, which is Z on your keyboard, can do the following thing. You can zoom into a specific area of your timeline. Now, of course, we have a very small project right here, but imagine that you have a project that, I don't know, it's really, really long. It can be like 45 minutes or one hour. So you can imagine that your timeline is really, really busy, I would say, and you want to find and you want to focus on a very specific clip on this 45 minute, let's say, timeline. You just select a part of the timeline to zoom into it. And this is it, this is how it works. And now, as you can see, we're very close and we can zoom even more and more and more. The zoom tool can also be used on the viewer in Final Cut Pro. So for example, let's say that we have this shot over here and I want to see a detail in this shot. So I can just 
click and I can zoom in and see the detail that I want to check. And here with the hand, I can choose the exact spot that I want to check. And here we are. And by hitting Option again and clicking on our mouse, we just zoom out. And with the hand tool, I should also mention that you can actually move freely on your timeline, as you can see like that, without messing up your edit. You can go up and down, left and right, without having the selection tool. Because if you have the selection tool, you might end up, you know, kind of destroying your edit. So using the hand tool to move up and down is actually pretty helpful. So these are the editing tools in Final Cut Pro. All of them are really helpful, each one for its specific reasons. You will see that as you edit, you will realize what your needs are and depending on your needs, you're going to say, oh, okay, I need this tool or I need that tool. So if you know what each one of them does, it will be really, really helpful. And as I said before, I can't stress enough how important it is to learn these shortcuts on your computer because this is going to make your editing process so much smoother. Trust me on that. I said that at the beginning. I'm saying it at the end again. This is it for today, guys. This is our video. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it gave you information that you needed for your editing. And if you liked the video, if you found it useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel it will be much appreciated. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!